Mars was never meant to be lonely. What if the red planet is just the surviving fragment of a war that shattered our solar system? And what if the same doom is quietly heading our way? Millions look up and see a dusty neighbor. A few see a cosmic crime scene still smoking in slow motion. Our textbooks tell a tidy tale. Dust swirls, clumps, and voila, planets appear. But look closer and the numbers wobble. Collisions at 45,000 miles an hour don't build worlds. They pulverize them like porcelain under a hammer. Flat, graceful orbits shouldn't emerge from cosmic chaos, yet every planet pirouettes on the same invisible record. And then there are hot Jupiters hugging their stars, impossible under the accepted model. Something doesn't add up and one man refused to ignore the equation. When the math lies, the universe is whispering a secret. Van Flanden chose to listen. Meet Dr. Tom Van Flanden, Yale PhD, US Naval Observatory, ACE, the human calculator trusted to place planets to the millisecond. The deeper he stared into orbital math, the more the official story frayed like old sailcloth. He proposed a different birth cry, solar fission. Young stars, spinning too fast, fling blistering blobs of plasma from their equators. Those blobs cool into planets, stealing their parents' spin on the way out. Cosmic children born mid-whirl. It explains the neat planetary disk, the unmatched angular momentum, even those hot Jupiters that never wandered far from home. If true, every planet is a runaway fragment, siblings flung from a stellar centrifuge. Yet one puzzle remained, glinting like shrapnel, Mars. Mars is undersized, underdense, off balance. If planets come in matched pairs, Earth's twin is Venus, Jupiter's is Saturn. So where is Mars' partner? Van Flanden considered the unthinkable. Mars is not a planet at all. It is a moon, a moon of a world that no longer exists. He called that lost world Muldak, and you've seen its graveyard, the asteroid belt. Suddenly Mars' oddities, thin air, mismatched hemispheres, stunted magnetism, look less like quirks and more like trauma. Two centuries earlier, mathematician Johann Bode noticed planets follow a tidy cadence like notes on a cosmic staff. His formula left an empty seat between Mars and Jupiter. Astronomers hunted, found only rubble, and shrugged. Debris that never formed. Van Flanden flipped the script. A planet did form, thrived, and then exploded. Most of its mass fled into deep space. The leftovers drift in silent memorial, exactly where the mass said a world should be. The asteroid belt isn't a nursery, it's a tombstone. If Moldak died in an inferno, its moon would be hurled outward, scarred and homeless. Look at Mars again, half smooth north, half battered south. It wears the blast like a mask no atmosphere can hide. Richard Hoagland, former NASA advisor turned cosmic detective, mapped Mars's wounds in forensic detail. Valles Marineris, a canyon 19 times deeper than the Grand Canyon, gouged where twin oceans once collided. Olympus Mons. A volcano three Everests tall, perched on a tidal bulge exactly opposite another rise. Bulges like these form only when a moon locks to a massive parent. Gravity needs rock the way tides need Earth's oceans. Mars behaves like a moon because it was one until its parent vanished. But what turned Muldak into dust? Enter Dr. John Brandenburg. A plasma physicist fluent in nuclear signatures, Brandenburg examined Viking lander data and froze. Xenon-129 blanketed the Martian surface at concentrations seen only after nuclear detonations. Worse, the isotope pools around Cydonia, home of the so-called face on Mars, and Galaxius Chaos, as if two warheads bracketed the globe. Brandenburg's conclusion, someone nuked Mars, and they fired twice for good measure. To him, Mars isn't a dead planet, it's ground zero. Planet-sized crime scene, twin impact zones, radioactive fingerprints, civil war or outside hit, Skeptics cry cosmic rays, but the pattern is too concentrated, too surgical, and comets add another clue. When satellites explode, their fragments dance around the largest chunk. Van Flanden predicted shattered planets would leave comets with miniature moons. Hale-Bopp arrived in 1996, bright, majestic, and trailed by companions exactly as he forecast. Shoemaker-Levy 9 struck Jupiter in 21 linked pieces, a celestial necklace born from a broken bead. Tiny moons orbiting dirty snowballs weren't fantasy, they were fingerprints of planetary murder. Still think planets leisurely snowballed into being? Myth meets math in 1958, when comic book legend Jack Kirby sketched the face on Mars. His giants built AI, lost control, forged a doomsday weapon, and shattered the planet between Mars and Jupiter, sparing only their moon. Kirby's confidence? Rocket scientists on Von Braun's team. Fiction? Or thinly veiled briefing delivered in panels and ink? Sometimes the safest place to hide truth is a comic rack. Patterns repeat because physics keeps the receipts. 
Venus spins backward, as if slapped. Uranus rolls on its side. Neptune strays too far. Pluto drifts in exile. Our solar family portrait is a crime scene lineup begging for re-examination. Zoom out. Two planets died. The survivors bear scars. Maldax debris wave talked Venus into retrograde. Uranus toppled like a cosmic bowling pin. Neptune's orbit stretched. Pluto was captured and pressed into icy exile. Earth? We were lucky. This time. Cosmic roulette spun and our marble landed on safe. But the wheel keeps turning, indifferent to life or legend. We're tenants in a dangerous neighborhood with no landlord to call. If Moldak's fate came from advanced weapons, intelligence once thrived here, close enough to watch our blue cradle form. If it was natural, it proves planets can detonate unprovoked. Either way, complacency is a luxury we can't afford. We're passengers on a bus with shattered windows, pretending the road ahead is smooth. We gaze at Mars and see the past. Mars may be staring back, warning us about the future. Its silent surface, a black box waiting to be read. Modern orbiters reveal dried deltas, salt flats, polygon-shaped lake beds. NASA papers now admit significant past oceans, vindicating Hoagland's ocean grind hypothesis line by line. But oceans require air pressure, and Mars lost its blanket in a geological blink. Atmospheric models show that a shockwave would let lighter gases flee first. The timing matches the xenon spike. Oceans flash frozen, life, if it existed, suddenly homeless, like fish flung onto a beach in mid-breath. Imagine standing on Maldak's moon, the day its sky was stolen, horizon glowing violet, winds howling outward into space, every breath thinner than the last. Earth's own craters, Chicxulub, Vredefort, Popegai, clusters suspiciously near time's asteroid fragments from beyond Mars rained inward. Geological cores record iridium layers, chemical fingerprints of cosmic shrapnel, Mass extinctions may be Maldak's last aftershocks echoing across epochs. We dig fossils and call them history. The universe calls them clues. History textbooks call it coincidence. Orbital mechanics calls it trajectory. In intelligent circles they joke, three points make a line, five make a policy. Here are five. One, a missing planet where math says one belongs. Two, Mars's two hemisphere scar and twin bulges. Three, Xenon 129 concentrated exactly where monuments sit. Four, comets orbiting in necklace formations. Five, outer planet spins and tilts behaving like bowling pins after a strike. Draw the line and it points back to one explosive epoch, in cosmic terms, practically yesterday. And if an epoch can begin, it can recur. The past is prologue. The fuse may still be burning. Telescopes now catch stars gulping their own planets, supernovae shredding companions, rogue worlds slingshotting into new suns. We are cataloging cosmic violence at unprecedented resolution, yet flinching at the idea it once happened here, in our celestial backyard. Denial is comforting. Delta is relentless. Together, they whisper, patterns are power. Recognize a pattern early, and you get a choice. Recognize it late, and you get a consequence. Tomorrow's historians, if any, will judge whether we chose curiosity or convenience. So, what will Earth choose? Van Flanden's ashes orbited Earth once before re-entry scattered them across the Pacific, a fitting farewell for a man who studied celestial debris. Brandenburg still lectures, facing polite smiles and raised eyebrows. Hoagland's inbox overflows with amateur photos of Martian anomalies. Their message to us is simple. If truth survives ridicule, it can still guide us. Stay hungry for the why, stay humble about the how, and, most of all, keep looking up. The sky isn't a ceiling. It's a courtroom full of silent witnesses, and the verdict is still being written. I'm glad you joined me on this journey. If you found it illuminating, consider hitting that subscribe button. Remember, every click powers the next leap into tomorrow's mysteries. Until then, stay curious and never stop asking, what if? This is Jump to Future, and I'll see you again soon.